out for your kingdom, yeah. Oh, he rides. Yes, Rico, welcome to the show, welcome to the show. Big up, General. It is my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Yes, 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 yes. In fact, I'm so happy to have you here on the show, and uh, I want to say big thank you for honoring the request and uh, we are happy that somebody as great as Rico, the voice of Europe is with us today. People, make some noise for Rico. Let me see some fire emojis. You are listening right now or you are watching right now one of the baddest artists out of Europe. You understand? Well, you. So, big up your chest, Rico. This is some overwhelming compliments today. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. Rico, let me tell you something before we start this show. Rico, you remember that this is, that is, is for me, it's a very big thing, you know. I'm so happy because when I think about back in the days, how we started this whole thing, you know, like plating, everybody was struggling, so and right now, you know, I remember the last time, at e Festival, when I see the kind of orchestra, the kind of show that you are pulling with the big band, as of freedom, everything, I was folding my hand and I said, man, we have worked. In fact, recall has gone, he is there, he's gotten there. So, it's a big pleasure for me to have you here, you know. Respect, blood. But I have to, I have to get things clear at the first because when I was taking my first baby steps in the scene, Trigger already was a general. <laughs> that has to be mentioned, of course, at the, at the very first of my story. Because when I was was starting to go, go to reggae and dancehall parties, um, I did see artists like um, Ty Styli, I did see artists like Emiliano, I did see artists like Camel, and there was DJ Trigger who was a big artist in Vienna and Austria. So this was kind of my role models. I looked up to people like them and, and I even remember going to live shows of Trigger and Emiliano and I yeah. told myself one day I want to have an impact on the reggae, Austria reggae scene and, and maybe worldwide reggae scene like you have. Oh my God! <laughs> Emiliano and, and, and people like Trigger and Emiliano because um, you guys did something very great because, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you went into the charts in Nigeria, right? Yes, 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 which satisfy me, you are right. I mean, what are we talking about? Like, For you, man, respect, respect. Before, before we get into this chat proper, I will want you, though we are, the people know you, but there are some people who would like to hear really who is rico i want you to first like introduce yourself let us know who is rico yes um i am i am rico i i go by the name of rico and i am a reggae and dancehall lover first of all i am a lover and second of all i i try myself as an artist and as a reggae ambassador um because i feel like the music itself reggae music has given me so much that I feel the responsibility to give something back so I try to, to, to grow, I try to develop as an artist and I try to give something back so um, when I first started my recall project first of all I started with Royal Combo it was a combination of three guys who were kind of successful of course of course in the mainstream in the mainstream business so nobody in the hardcore scene did know or some people might not even know that i was an artist because i was going to the parties standing in the corner being all by myself just enjoying the vibes and i figured some some of the people did not even know that i'm a reggae artist but it was cool at that time because <laughs> they wanted it that way yes so, Five years ago, um, I decided to, to come out with my solo project and from that moment on, I, did, I really did put in the hard work for myself and for reggae music, for the audience, for each and everyone participating in the reggae scene, like activists, like promoters, like DJs, like um, dancers, artists, anybody, like Massive and crew and, and everybody 
has to get something out of, of, of my hustle because I want the reggae scene to be seen. I want it to be seen on a bigger platform. Yes, of course. Of course. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for those of you watching. As you just heard from Recall, he wants reggae music to be on a bigger platform. That is what I also want, you know. It's a very big thing, you know, for real. And it's not just talking, he's doing. This is one thing I like about Recall. Recall is one of the most consistent reggae dancer artists in Austria. I'm not just saying it because it's here, you know. Look, if we check this this year, uh, was a slow year for everybody. But the people who know what they are doing, they use the time where somebody like this guy right here, record. He used his time where he, he had. I don't. I, how many how many singles did you drop in this uh, quarantine period? Yeah, I did. I did uh, use the time well because I also did quit my job after 13 years. I was working full time. Um, whilst I was building up my musical career, so I was working 40 hours a day, uh, a week, and I was building building my music career. So I did quit my job after 13 years. It was a hard decision. I was kind of afraid um, yeah. of it too, but I did quit 2020, um, three weeks before the lockdown. So that was kind of a funny situation. <laughs> um, but I did use the time well because I wrote 21 songs and we released. I don't know. Um, not all of them because we kept some of them for the upcoming album, which is going to be out on 31st, January 31st. Yeah. Um, but I was releasing, I don't know, 9 or 10 or 11 songs. Boom! <laughs> Imagine! Yeah. Yeah. That is heavy. <laughs> yeah, and one of them is uh, like something that is telling what you are telling about me because I'm, I'm a man who does something. I'm not only talking. I put in the hard work, I'm not talking, I'm doing things. I was seeing a project like the Unification Song for a long, 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 long time. It was, it was, I don't know, I was seeing it, to be honest, for 10 years. Wow! I wish somebody else would have come up with it earlier, but for some reason, nobody did it. And I did, uh, for, for, for me and myself, I just wanted this project to take place and to, to happen. So it was very important to, to myself too. So I tried to make it happen and it happened. Man, before I forget, let me thank you officially that you brought me into Team Reggae Austria and you made me feature on that song. I am, in fact, every day I'm so happy that I'm part of that song. It's a big tune, not just because it's a big tune, but because of the symbolism, you know what I mean? You know, unification, and then I am there with you, with all the big stars like that, you know, important artists from Austria. For me, yeah. it's a really big step, you know. Thank you so much, thank you so much. So, um, anytime, anytime, brother. Um, I would like to... I would like to, 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 you know, I would like you to like tell the people when exactly did you start recording or when did you start singing professionally? Um, well, I, I have a very long musical history. I started when I was six because my father did pass on his musical dedication yeah. on to me. He was a professional musician. He was a trumpet player. So he kind of passed this on to me, so I made my steps very early at the ages of five or six. I started to play trumpet. After that, um, everybody was coming to my mom and telling her, man, this boy has some talent. <laughs> you, you, yeah, you, you, need to, you need to support that. Um, so she sent me go to a musical school, which is called and, 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 and globally known as the Vienna Boys Choir. Okay. I was traveling the world at very early stages. I was collecting some good memories. I was getting some very nice experiences. I had a professional music education, singing education. So, yeah. That's wow. Basically it. it paid off, man. It paid off. I can see it, you know. Yeah. And also, I must also confess that the way that is from, you know, when we are on Bass Runner, you know, you were already like with, uh, you were making your project with Rhea Combo and things, you know, and compared to now, man, 
the way you your yeah, your you, you, your vocal your vocal you know experience the way everything grow is very great you know you really you work on it like continuously every next tune is better with the voice with the rhymes with the lyrics oh my god yes big up your chest for that man it's so nice and i'm so happy that you are from austria where i am right now you know so yeah. people will see that you know we have real real big stars in austria not just talking you know what i'm saying so when we say the voice of europe man there's not much voice like recall so everybody recognize share this stream because we are just starting you know yeah, yeah. so so let me say um like what really influenced you you know apart from the fact that you said you you you, you, you know you started with this trumpet and you know and you know yeah, people spoke to your mom and you went to the 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 the, the music school and things but you know there is something inside the art that always influence somebody to do something what was that that made you feel that i can stand out as an artist mm. <clears throat> it's difficult to tell um, uh, one thing but i can tell you um that i think when you have a passion and a dedication in life you don't choose that it chooses always it chooses you true 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you get picked by your destiny and it's, it's never the other way around so um I was I was having like a musically overload as you can imagine being at the Vienna choir boys you have a tight schedule you're traveling the world I had to take a few steps back from music to get me back to music again um, and it was happening like I was I was with my friends in an athletics club and I was passed on a Bob Marley cassette and instantly I fell in love with reggae music and I knew at that moment okay this is reggae music this is some 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 mainstream artists i was listening to to bob marley to bunny whaler i was listening to peter tosh but on side b on the flip side there was like um um actual jamaican reggae stars like buju banton buru banton elephant man beanie man bounty killer and i never knew some of those guys so i was thinking to myself bombo club what kind of language what kind of vibe what kind of yes. this is it this is why i'm here for and i was back at music and it never left me again nice 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 so uh that leads me to my next question um what was your start you know because i don't think maybe you started with like reggae music what did you did, were you what what kind of music like really you really started listening to when you really start to listen to music when you grew up like start loving music what kind of music was that um as a youngster i was listening to classic music like what was on the radios and, and like mainstream music from yes exactly that's what I, uh -huh. she was putting on yeah she was putting on some austrian music and we would listen to the radio stations a lot so that was basically um my my first um, um experiences with music and of course um at the vienna boys choir we had of course only strictly classical music okay so that was the foundation of my of my music and as i grew older as i went on to school and and did the drop out of, of vienna boys choir i kind of developed my 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 own um, musical style and at first i was listening to some um, music from offspring from system of a down rap music from limp biscuit and yes like that. but it just only was like a year or so and then after that i was in the athletics club and was passed on this musical thing. yes it's always like that you, everybody started yeah. i mean with some other gen or whatever and then though some people really started with reggae music you know but some other people st started with like me too personally i started with really Kind of disco music because my father yeah. was playing all this type of music you know had a lot of uh records so but you know yeah. we had some few reggae reggae records like uh, eric donancy bob marley yeah. and some other so this were like some special message for me though i didn't really get the message from the beginning but i i, I was seeing something different in this music than the other kind of music you know yeah. <laughs> so yes 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 that 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 is uh known now um you know 
your music, you know, you are like, I see that you have a very strong test, you know, good test in your music, you know. So I, 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 I sometimes I, I start to wonder if you write your lyrics by yourself or, you know, somebody is writing for you. Do you pay somebody to write for you or everything that is on your song is coming straight from your head or from your heart? You pen it down by yourself? Um, I figured that a lot of people um, ask this question to themselves for a long time now and I will answer this question very honestly. Um, for all of my musical career I have ever been writing my lyrics by myself. It is all from my head. No one else ever touched any of my lyrics. So wow. everything you hear is out of my head. Straight from you man. Yeah, yeah. Big up yourself. I want to ask you, what was the first, what's the title and what year was the first reggae music or reggae song that you did? So, I was kind of experimenting. Um, we did build a sound system called Royal Combo 1999. And, um, I was starting as an MC and I really only have bad memories because my first steps in, in being a songwriter in reggae was like, oof. Sometimes I listen to the old, old tapes and, and, and I'm kind of embarrassed, but you have to take one step to know of course. where you have to go. You have to make mistakes to, 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 to know your way. You have to try out something at first. I mean, it's like every journey starts with, with the first step. Um, but let me, let me try to remember like the first songs that... We Which heard. was like the, the first hype, hype song for me for reggae, that's what I mean. The first hype song of reggae for me was From Vienna to the World, definitely. From Vienna to the World. Uh, is, it, is it the same song that I... Uh, Vienna Story? No, it is not. No, 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 it is not. Because, because for me... Uh, Vienna to the World and Vienna Story, which one, is, which one was uh, first? Um, first was Vienna Story, but this was just a trial in, to, to be in the reggae scene. I recorded it back in the day. But for me, for me, let me tell you, personally, that was the song, that was the song that, you know, like first touched me, like I was like, wow, because this time, you know, with Baby Sham, um, Whitey, Whitey did the England Story, um, you know, so, yeah. and then, you know, because I was DJing a lot then, and I found a song to play like Vienna Story for recall. I was like, oh my god. For me, that was a song. That was a song. Yeah. For it, me. It's a funny story because at that time I was still being very hype in the mainstream reggae music with, um, like in the mainstream pop reggae. Yes, music, yes, yes. Royal Combo. So that was that time when I spoke about when I was telling. I did not want anybody to know that I'm an artist when I go around and, and, and be in, in the reggae scene when I go out to the parties. So nobody knew. And then Baby Sham came out with Ghetto Story. <clears throat> and all over the world, everybody, every artist, every every city's artist did make their own version of Amsterdam Story. Yes. Story, blah, blah, blah. And I was wondering, <laughs> nobody came up with Vienna Story. Vienna Story. <laughs> so, and this, this was the moment when Kodak linked me he came to me and said recall i know you're an artist i know that you can sing come over to my place let's record a vienna story and i said well okay but don't tell every anybody that it's me that <laughs> <laughs> so i was standing in the crowd i know dj rebel you know yes and like kinky reggae's on tuesday yes 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 he was playing the tune, I was standing in the crowd, nobody knew that it was me. So yes. Not even DJ Rebel Yeah, that's I came I was like, who is this guy? <laughs> yes, man, for real, for real, for real. Big up your chest. And that was a very good one, you know, because nobody among all of us who was into a reggae dancer doing it that and none of us thought of it and then the music came from you. I was like, man, this guy, this guy bop. Nice, 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 nice. So, um, I would like to ask you another question. Like, you told me you write all your lyrics yourself, you know? Yeah. What is, the, what is that 
how do you get your, your, your like your inspiration you know what i mean like a lot of people also ask me like trigger but how can you just sit down and you just build up something like this at times i don't even know how to answer it so that was why i said i will ask you this question what gives you that inspiration do you have to because some people say man when i smoke tom and i and i start getting inspiration things start coming do you need to smoke or do you need to be in somewhere very cool near the river or something i want to know how you get your inspiration um it just can drop in at any any second but um what i can say most definitely i don't need any kind of influence of any kind of drug i don't need that i write my lyrics sober i write my lyrics clean um, and you as an artist, you know that you cannot afford to be high when you want to be working professionally, when you want to grow, when you want to improve. Yes. Um, you cannot afford that because the fucking scene is, is professional and the fucking scene is like everybody's hustling really hard. So you need to hustle as hard as them or even harder and you can't afford to sleep. Um, no way. <laughs> Even when you sleep, one eye is open. <laughs> yeah, 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 always, always. And so I try to get my inspiration like from all over the world. What I see, what happens around me. Yes. What, what's in my environment? What, what special situations do I see from within my close friends? What, what kind of situations happen to myself? So this is a very, very um, interesting question from you. Um, and I'd like also like to, to tell the people that um, at the very beginning, I told and I said to myself, I try to be as authentic as possible. So you will never hear recall singing about guns or drugs or living in the ghetto or like being the pimp or being the number one gangster because I am not. I do <laughs> reggae music. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm living I'm living in Austria. I grew up in Vienna. We are not in Jamaica. We don't have the same kind of problems. We don't have the same kind of struggles here. For real, man. For real. You are right. A different situation. So I try to be as authentic as I can. So I was coming up with some good night songs for children. For example, Sleep Soon. Yes. I was writing this for, for a, a young boy so that he can, I don't know, um, listen to reggae music. Like Chronics. He says, my lyrics clean. Bring, bring in the children because my lyrics clean. And clean. For real. Like Clean, clean. I like very nice, very nice. Uh, so let's talk about um, your label. Yeah. Should I call it uh, your label? I, I would like to call it our label because this is the same label that made Trigger who Trigger is today, you know. So let's talk about that label. So tell us about your label. What, which label do you belong to? And how has it been with this label? Is this label really assisting? Is this label really a label what to be with? First of all, tell us the name of the label. Bass Runner Music. It is. Boom. Um, and, <laughs> and, and, and it is known worldwide, I guess. Bass Runner Music has built itself um, and, and made itself a name in the reggae scene. And definitely for a reason, because everything that happens with Bass Runner is strictly professional and um, it is even agree. That. And, 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 um, as you can imagine i'm in the business for like 20 years no more than 20 years and i have seen managers i have yes. seen labels i have seen a lot of people chatty 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 <laughs> true um but with this runner it was just like on a different level from from the scratch you know um i was I was feeling the vibe, the connection. We were on the same wavelength, like from the very first second. Um, it's always honest. The partnership is honest. There yes. is loyalty. There is loyalty that is very important. And like you feel good with Bass Runner. I owe a lot to Adam Bass Runner. He has opened many, many, many doors. But as it always is, somebody can open the door. Somebody can put you in in the right place. But you always have to take the chance. For real. You always have to live up to take that chance. Yes. I mean, so I owe a lot to Bass Runner Music, and I 
uh, I give them my loyalty like forever and I'm not thinking of switching label because I'm very happy with it. Being yeah, I'm comfortable. Nice, nice, nice. It is a win-win situation, you know, because they they have seen in me an artist who wants to work. Who really yes, wants true, to work. true, it's yeah. Certainly. It is not like a one-hit wonder. Somebody who was seeing a Sean Paul video like Lou and he was like, oh yeah, I can smoke a split too. Oh yeah, I can sing it busy. Hmm. Mm, this is a hype thing right now. Let's try reggae music. No, they have seen in me what I am. A consistent, reggae, conscious, clean-hearted reggae artist, a musician. And that's what I am. I'm, I'm, I'm nice, I am. nice, nice, nice. I can also attest to that for you. Big up your shit. So, um, I want to ask you, you because you have a lot of uh, collabs with different artists how do you manage these collabs do you speak to those artists or is the label that is working everything out for you because recently you have this uh big song that i really like so much ganja love remix with million styles yeah. with a very very super wicked video uh you know how do you manage this because you i mean you have other collab with there's there's the song from um is it Lesos? This one I love that song so much. Yeah. Is it Lesos? Or yeah, it's Lexus, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Anyway, and you know, and some other songs that you did. You know? It ha it happens both ways. Sometimes the label comes up and sometimes you did build a, a connection and, and a foundation with the artist that you meet on tour, that you talk to. Um, and lately, like 2020 we have been building some very good vibes and, and most of my features um, I pull because I know the artists yes they, they see my work and like like I said before you build a connection somewhere you meet them at some festival you meet them at some concerts and yes they, yes 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 true to say hi and, and they're passing by and, and, and um, I have done unexpectedly I must say when I think back to the time when I was starting doing this whole thing, it's like a dream come true. I mean, I have some some really big feature feature guests to come up to 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 be on my album, which is called Unification, and it's only gonna be feature songs on it. And we're gonna have Anthony B there. We're gonna have Turbulence. We're gonna have Perfect Kitty Money. We're gonna have Bobby Hustle. We're gonna have various um, Austrian artists like you on the Unification song. Yes. I'm going to have an extra feature with John Dizzy, which is out already, with Daily Man, and, and it's going to be very, very, very big. And also, I must say, I owe a lot to the big, big, big man, Sam Gilly from House of Rhythm. Boom, boom, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yes, for real. That one is, a, in fact, it's classic in the whole world. It's a classic big man in the whole world of reggae music, Sam Gilly. And also, and also, I'd like to say one thing. One thing um, I'd like to add. Um, my number one rule is to 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 build a vibe with with an artist. I'm not I'm not trying to make um, like uh, hits for cash. You know. Yeah. I try to get cash because I made a hit. And I try to I try to build a connection with the artist because my number one rule is I don't pay for any features because I for myself think that my music is good enough for me to heal one or two persons who, who connect to my music. And that's all I need. I don't need any chart rankings. I don't need any numbers. I don't need any stats. No no, no number one chart ranking is worth as much as one song that nobody knows but one person. And it helped that person out of a very bad time. Nice, that's nice, nice. Goal. I don't pay for collaborations. If you feel my music, yes. connect, then I like it. I love it. And if we don't, it is the best way, bro. Trust me, that, that, that that's the best way, for real. Yes, yes, yes. I I, I know that you play with one of the biggest bands in, in Europe. You know that is um, uh, House, of House of Reading. Do you do you do, do you play any instrument? Do you play any instrument? I play a little um, piano. And of course, I have to play trumpet because of my father. Do you produce? Do you produce readings? No, I don't produce. No.
Okay, but I mean, you are you 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 are used to like you know uh, engineering like I mean like when I came to for 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 uh, unification song, you recorded me. Yes, so, I recorded you. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, 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 I try to self-educate myself in, in, as much as possible within the musical business. In yes. Sound engineering. I'm doing my graphics. Yes. Um, sometimes I'm doing my own videos. So um, I kind of tried myself out in, in many different ways. Yeah, so that is like, 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 for example, if you have something that comes to you now, for example, that you really want to record, you can just go to the computer, set it up, everything, and voice by yourself, right? Of course. What you see there behind me uh, on this side, this is my voice. voice in the <laughs> I have like a setup that is on the level of, on a professional level, so it's enough for any studio to work with. Yes. So this is important to me because, um, as you know, writing lyrics is something very personal. It is personal. You have to dive into that emotion. You have to dive into that instrumental that you want to write on. So it's kind of hard. Even if you are surrounded by your loved ones, you get some different vibes. Yes. Even if it's not intentionally, um, if they don't try to do you some some bad, but you get the vibes. Because true, you're true, true. Sensitive. So it's something personal, and I did not make good experiences in writing my lyrics when I was in some studios because there was always a friend of a friend of someone else, and. He was impressed and he was not impressed. And <laughs> mixed vibe and yeah, he tried true, to, true, true. to concentrate on writing a love song. And there is some hustlers and gangsters sitting around you that you don't even know. So this is not a not a nice situation to be in. And, and, and nice, so. nice, nice. Big up your chest, Rico. I would have loved to play some music from you, but I will reserve the music for the end. You know, yeah. I would like to ask you. Uh, the next thing I really like to ask you now. It's about the clash, the clash, the Austrian clash. You know, I don't know if you were ever involved in any other clash apart from the one we had in this quarantine or this uh, lockdown period. Did you ever involve yourself in any clash? No, I, I have never been. In so what do you think? What do, do you think that this clash that we did or that I tried to initiate was something good for, for us? Or was something like, you know, um, like, you know, this guy wanted to test me, want to test me. Or it is good, like, you know, we are all artists, let's prove ourselves or something. Like, what do you think about that clash? Or do you see that trigger as a troublemaker? Can you talk about it? Yeah, with the background that I have never been in any kind of clash situation and nobody did ever step Man, you were like, you were, you, you were so, so, so hot, bad! <laughs> Um, surprised. I, will, I, I had mixed feelings because at first, I mean, you have to be honest, there is some serious other background also. So I did feel the vibe from that background. I did get the vibes from the clash and I was like, okay, what, what's going on here? I'm waking <laughs> up to some, to some bad news. Um, uh, how do I handle the situation? Yes. As we moved on in the clash, um, I did figure out that something great can happen here if everybody just keeps it at a certain level um, of not I don't know calling out somebody else's mom yeah or like that so if everybody just stays inside of that rules so it can turn out as something very very good for me myself out because I'm not that clasher I'm not that uh, let's call it like Batman Lewis is yeah. I did try and, and no, 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 bro, bro. I don't know. You, you, you say you are not a, a clashman, but I must tell you. I must tell you this in this live interview because a lot of friends from me they were asking me, man, who is, who is this guy? Who is this guy? My friends from UK, my friends from Nigeria. You know, yeah. they ask about other artists on the class too, but. Everybody was reposting anything I post from me. It was crazy, you know. I was like, wow. I was personally, I was feeling that we were just silent a bit. I was really mixing the vibe, like 
Really, I wanted to DJ, I wanted to perform, I wanted to do things, but nothing was up. I was feeling like, I was feeling down, you know? And then I had some problems with my um, collaborators that I worked with that time, all those things. I was just thinking of an escape, you know, like something that will change this whole vibe. And I say, let's, let me do this. Even before I, before I tried to mention them, I say, I hope they will understand. I was thinking, you know, then bam, it all came. And then the, the old thing start, a lot of people were calling me like, man, Trigger, why you don't, why you, look, what's wrong with you? What? I was like, man, just watch. Yeah. But later, all everybody came to me like, man, Trigger, that was a very good idea. In fact, I'm very happy. And I hope that maybe in the future, you know, would you do things like this? It is for me. A lot of people realize that there are real artists in Austria after that yeah. clash. You know what I mean, you know. So this is a very for me. I didn't. I, I, I actually to speak in fact. I didn't expect the outcome. I didn't expect the way people will take it. You know, like that. You know, but at last I was really happy that I even initiated that kind of thing. And I want to thank you so much. Because you are one of the artists that really keep it, keep the, the rules and really like kind of show what you got, you know, my lyricalities, my, 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 uh, um, your, your lyrics and your flows, your rhymes, everything was on point for real. Yes. Big up your chest record. Yeah, well, thanks for that. Thanks for that. And, and I wish, um, I, I wish that I would have wished that. Um, I mean, with the background of, of that kind of uh, influence and, and that kind of tension that was starting before Clash, I think everybody was feeling the tension that it was not the right tension and it was not the right time to start the Clash because I think that that was the reason why so many art, other artists from Austria did decide to not jump into the Clash because they were confused as well. Uh -huh. I was. I was trying my first step and then you did respond and I did respond and, and you did respond and as it went on it kind of the tension went away so everybody knew okay it's a fun clash now because you were reposting my stuff and yes. I was posting your stuff and, and, and we were giving the people a show but from the very first beginning of the clash our, I think everybody was feeling okay there is some there is some bad issues and <laughs> bad vibes on it. Yes. So um, that's why I guess why why no other artist except of Gailiman did jump in on the clash, which I think personally is very sad because it would have gone much further. Than yes, that. yes, for real, it would have gone for further, real, man. Bigger. Yeah, but at least for, for for the first time we did it. You know, we we made it happen. For me, for me, I was like, I was happy. You know, after everything, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a very big move for Austria reggae dance or scene. You know. For real. I, I once said, I once said in an interview, um, like, my intention is to bring reggae music, which is a music for everybody, like my songs. I always say, like, my songs, as, as the moment that I put out my song, it's not longer my song, it's, it's everybody's song. So, my personal goal is to put reggae on a bigger platform to make reggae scene for everybody, because so many people were working so hard for a long time yes it's even alive to keep the parties running to keep the concerts running and stuff like that and i always say how can you call yourself an artist if you only sit in your own living room <laughs> record do some online shitty shitty release some but you never play a show and you never do nothing for the audience yes exactly for audience. for audience and as soon as i figured out this is not about bad issues or me versus trigger yes jump in because i was like finally we are giving something to the audience and people were waiting you know what I mean? it was entertaining desperately desperately waiting because nobody does nothing nothing does exactly nothing. It's just we put in out some music online. We just put in. <laughs> I dropped another song online. Yeah. They're untouchable. There is nothing there for the people. You know. You have to do something for the people. That's why I call myself the reggae ambassador. I go to the parties. I talk to the people. I make unification projects. I bring people together. 
as good as I can. I am for real, for real, man. Big up your shares about that, man. Because the, because the first song I'm going to play will be that unification song we did together. Because that song is, you know, is symbolic. Apart from the fact that the song is dope, it's symbolic. But before I will ask you that, I want to ask you, because I saw recently that, um, I, I, I saw recently that, you have a, a, a new mixtape out, you know, you know, yeah. you know, uh, by who is it from Bezo? No, there's a sound system from Germany. Yeah, it is a sound system from Germany. We did in a collaboration, we did a mixtape, which is called The Voice of Europe. Okay. Which features only recall songs and it is mixed by Sentinel. Sentinel, Sentinel, yeah. Big, but Sentinel, Big bad sentinel for real. That's what I I, I do want to make a mistake. Sentinel, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sentinel. So um, how many how many do you know of, of like how many singles do you have? Because in only only this within this lockdown you you drop like nine singles. So yeah. but in general, how many singles or how many albums do you have out there? Let me let me look it up for you because I have it ready in 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 my computer. Let's look it up. I can tell you in a second. Okay. Um, because I did make a list while while we are we were in lockdown because it was kind of my interest too. So with uh, together with Royal Combo, I have one hundred and three songs. Bombo Cloud! 103 <laughs> songs. Like one hundred and three songs officially released. Or like, you know, um, not all of them are officially released, but like, let's say, eighty percent. Oh, that's a lot out. That's a lot out there, man. Yeah, I was I was starting this recall project in five years ago, and I didn't know nobody because, as I said before, I was trying myself in the mainstream pop scene, so. I was kind of unknown in the reggae, in, in the hardcore reggae scene for producers, for audience, for other artists, for everyone. So I was starting myself, um, I did buy some rhythm, some versions on iTunes and I did collect some rhythm forwards. I dropped many tunes um, on famous rhythms for free download on my SoundCloud page. Yes. Um, and this strategy turned out well because it went from Until She's Alone, which I released on, on SoundCloud, and it got um, recognized by who? By Sentinel Sound. Oh! Uh -huh. Sentinel Sound, back in the days, like five years ago. Yes. Um, Sentinel Sound, DJ Olde came up to me and said, man, you have to do a doublet of this song for me. And I said, yes, but you have to work for it. <laughs> <laughs> you want it for free, I know, you are a big part Sentinel, but you have to do something for me in return too. Yes. Um, I did work for free, you know, you know, for a long time, it's enough now. So yes. I don't want to work for free. Nobody has to work for free. So, True. Um, he was doing some promo, and this promo did reach to Bass Runner. And Bass Runner did see um, the top plate that I recorded for Sentinel Sound, and Bass Runner immediately reached out to Recall and said, Recall, I'm having a radio show on FM4. What about in the top for Bass Runner? And I was like, now we're talking. <laughs> my, my business move, my strategy, my plans to... I, I, was, I, I was reaching out to artists, I was reaching out to promoters, I was reaching out to producers. I did not get any, any kind of response. Nobody did answer. So then I figured mm, I have to do some... I have to get some attention first. I need to release a lot of rhythms. I need to, uh, I, I need to release a lot of songs on, on famous rhythms. I did that. And it turned out... It was like a golden move for me because Sentinel lit here, um, lit Bass Runner did respond to that. And after that, we kind of built up the, the connection with Bass Runner and we slowly started to release and release officially. And then we came up um, with the mixtape from Vienna to the World, which had 25 songs on it. Okay. We took it from there to the next project, to the Vibes Ambassador EP, which had it was like from Vienna to the World mixtape was just a mixtape for introdu introduction of, of recall um, for this introducing reason so to make me know in, in the scene and, and, and give me a bigger platform so we, we took it from there to, to produce the Vibes Ambassador EP which had six songs on it officially released 
We took it from there to the next EP, like one or two years later, Beats of Life EP, which had six or seven or eight songs on it. And we took it from there to the next project, to the Voice of Europe mixtape. Yes. And we, at the same time, we were taking it to the next project, like the album that is dropping on January 31st, which is called Unification. Boom, 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 boom. And so the album is exclusively produced by House of Rhythm. Wow, House of Rhythm. In fact, that that is a big that is already a big big step that Out of Rhythm produced that album already. And all you just said now, in fact, it's a big journey. You 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 you've done a lot, bro. You know, big up your chest, you know. And to come to this extent that you are right now in reggae music, in this scene in Europe, it's not it's it's not easy, you know. So you have really done a lot. And before we continue this interview, I still have some few questions, but I would like you to be there when I'm gonna play this next tune, Unification Song. Yes. Because this song is a song that I really love, not because I'm there, as I told you before, the symbol in fact. Let's play it and listen together, bro. Yeah. Unification song. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. All right. Rico official with Team Reggae Austria. Yeah. One, two, Rasta Mana Babu. I represent, represent me, tell you all that we are part. Two, and Confitalo. Listen the message where we send. And I and I me tell you everything better when we are start working. For so long we need a unification sound. That's what we tell them for the whole of us. Now for them a fight against unity. Like my skinny man. Come problems in our community. Tell who live our lives. You don't see them not true to me. And them try push with your baba, but that ain't not new to me. You lay down to me now. And I want to take my man now. Them can't take me no idiot. Man, I'm not puppy show. Then I come your face to blow. Unity strength that let me know. Got any more minds to go and I'll let you respect me now. Ich 
Stern. Weil es anders geht, als das, was sie im Radio hören. Doch das ist sein Team Radio Austria. Außer oder überirdisch. Fresh Music Made in Austria. Everything. Production. Aus Gut. All the artists. Das besser. You don't lose it. Gemeinsam werden Berge versetzt. Now you see the quality of Rico, T Reggae Austria, we big man, yes. you don't know. Yo Rico, thank you once again for putting this together, it's a big thing man, for real. It was my, it was my pleasure. <laughs> I, I, for I, real, for real, for real. Um, just in case anybody thinks that or is coming up with any kind so of... So, I want to ask you now, um, which, um, which artist inspire you or which artist that you, you listen to i'm talking of reggae dancer artists international which artist do you you know rate give me like three to five artists that you look up to um i really look up to million styles yeah um i really look up to damien marley because he's just consistently putting out quality at the highest level you will never hear any kind of swear words you will never hear any kind of discrimination you will never hear any kind of harm against anybody it's just you're talking about daily man no 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 uh, damien marley damien marley oh, okay 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 yeah because i wanted to say damien. you should have said wait wait i will ask you about that <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. continue please yeah yeah it, it, it is damien marley and and who else i mean it depends on, on on my my situation myself but um as i said it's mi at the time it's million styles and it's damien marley and of course i listen a lot of chronics yeah and yeah basically any other artists as well okay we, okay we, so we same thing same thing we are in austria can you also tell me about some artists that you listen to or that you read? Yes, of course. Um, from time to time, I listen to trigger music. You know, I was a big friend. I mean, he... wow! <laughs> <laughs> you know, how I feel when you say this, man. Thank you so much. I was the biggest fan of the song Trigger Gyalala. You know that. Yes, I know, I know, I know, I know. You know that I'm not lying. I'm not yes. Lying. No, 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 no. I know this for real, man. For real. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was, I was dancing hard in, in the clubs to this song. Yes. I was, I was requesting Trigger. Gyalala. All the time, true. Um, so I'm, I'm listening a lot to Rebel Music Crew. You know them? They're uh, um, a, a reggae band from Tirol. Ah, uh, okay. Tirol. Yeah, John Dizzy, who is in the video with yes, us. Yes, 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 yes. The frontman of this band. Of course, I listen to um, Esprit, I listen to Deliman, I listen to Bandulu songs. Bandulu, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have some, we, we have some talented, some talented singers. For real, for real, for real, man. Thank you so much. This is so nice, so nice, so nice, so nice. So, I want you before we go. I want, would you? We, we, will I stress you if I ask you to give us a very short freestyle so that people will hear something directly from your mouth? Of course, of course. Come on, do that for us, please. Um, yes, of course. And, and I, I will come up with one of, one of my favorite songs. So um, I hope that everybody feels the song because everybody does it themselves. So it's like, Oh my God, me love the ganja. How the sweetest aroma them know. If a good meditation, then plan for a the highest DJ trigger in my smoke. Oh my God, me love the ganja. A the sweetest aroma, me know. I am gonna burn a split. <laughs> a the ganja love. A the ganja love. Ganja love. Don't talk about the benefits. No <laughs> lie, him tell what the image is. <laughs> good facts, campions, and images trigger him no from Vienna to Philippines. Marijuana, sure even little kids. Pharmacy try keep it prohibited. Ca healthy people now nah, bring no benefits. Boom! One shot, man. Respect, respect. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So right now you've told us a lot of this 
all this project and all this thing where can we get it when we want it we want to check you out anytime where can we reach your music on the regular platforms it's like you will find me on instagram if you type in recall but make sure to type it in with a k not with a c yes call r-e-k-a-l-l 56 on most of the platforms you will find me on spotify you will find me on facebook i even have a home page like recall.at so if you want to find me you will find me wow boom 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 so also tell everybody your your, your social media handles instagram and the other so that people can follow you up you, 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 you will find me on instagram if you type in if you go look for recall 56 or recall 56 recall yeah recall 56 yeah okay it's basically that it's easy as that Only on on twitter and all the, everything is recall 56 no i don't have twitter because i don't like it i don't have tiktok because i don't support this hype yes yes okay 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 really really really, really nice thank you so much recall um I, 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 I will play a next music but i would like you to give um like you know we have a lot of artists coming up in austria uh, i'm saying austria because you know this is our scene what kind of advice do you have to give to the young artists who are coming up and how they should go um i would tell them stick to the truth be yourself don't rush things things will come if they are meant for you so that's basically it trust yourself for you it's like the main thing like the special thing that i did was not be in that lyricist be in that singy singy but the special thing that turned out for me to be gold is to never give up consistency for real to never give up even if a hundred thousand of people around you are not feeling your dream are not able to see the bigger picture it's not their fault it's your dream it's your life yes it's your responsibility to go the fucking way until to the goal line and to take one more step into the goal so it's your responsibility never give up trust yourself thank you thank you thank you thank you so much rico thank you so much um i want to play next tune from recall this one is a tune this one is a tune officially this next tune is called ganja love featuring million style yeah oh yes <laughs> the ganja love weed mix recall Millie.
Shout out to Rico, big artist, Austrian artist. Yes, people. Talk to them, Billy. When I rise, say your prayer to the breaking. Bring me chat, drop a spiritual educating. Kiss me and press and dance and be for the waiting. Next thing they drop, it makes me waiting. First look, money can be so captivating. Brush it up and put it in the cup, no delay. One step at a time, I'm elevating. Come to close you with show up on it. Give me the alcohol and coke to sniff. Pull up the trucks, they will play on the boat and ship. So it will reach all over quick. I'm curious, quick. PS run around the rhythm and it sound like it. We can give me a call and say, throw up on it. He needs a pandemic, but miss it, don't panic. Cause we have Jaddy Almighty and good panic. Oh my God, my love, the ganja. Thank you so much for joining the show. It's been a, a very, very wonderful two hours of reading dreaming. Oh my guess, we call. We call. Top at top. Yes, you don't know. Watch out for next week. I'm, I'm going to have another guest. People. Ganja Love Remix is out every platform. Rico featuring the your stars. He gave us a herb. Yes, man. A plant. Yes. That we can use for so many good things. You know. Instead of being dependent on the system by buying their pills, See? their drugs, and their dead is sin. Dead is sin. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, people. Recall. Big shout out to Recall. Thank you so much for coming on this show. In fact, I am the most, 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 most happiest person to have an artist like Recall today. But meanwhile, I would like to play one more, one last tune before we close this whole team. It's also from Recall, and this one is featuring Mr. Lex. Mr. Lex. This one is called Any Window. Listen. This is where we leave you all. Shake up Recall. Download Recall's music. I put it in your mix. Recall is one of the baddest artists from Austria. Reggae dancer saying. Is that another Insta? No. For a long time, we've been on this game together. Remember how we used to fuck one time? Pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it. I'll let you hear this music well, and then we say bye. Thank you again, Rico, for coming on the show. One of these days will bring you back. Yes, people. Listen. I'm Mr. Lex. Mr. Lex Rico. Remix. Hey. From Vienna to the world. From Vienna to the world. Let's get this.